Now, just over 12 months ago, we received the keys to our newly built home. And at about the same time, I had a solar array put on the roof. Today, armed with 12 months worth of data and bills, um, I thought we'd deep dive into it a little bit and see if it was a worthwhile investment, um, putting that solar array on the roof and what it's cost us in energy to drive this house for 12 months. So stay tuned. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Daryl and welcome to the channel. I thought we'd have a bit of a chat today now, armed with 12 months worth of data of running this home, of what it actually costs for an average family to run what I see as an average family home. Um, the types of loads that we've got on it, and especially with investing uh, a reasonable amount of money into a solar system on the roof and what impact it's made to our bills. Um, that impact I see has been quite quite remarkable actually. So let's deep dive into some of that data. Now up there we've got a 9.75 kilowatt solar array. There's 25 Qcell 390 watt panels and each panel has an end phase inverter on it. So it's not a string system and it was sold to us by Penrith Solar Centre. We're so very happy with it. We've never had to ring them for any dramas or anything. From the day they installed it, it's worked and it's just worked and it does everything that they suggested to it that it would. I'm just a happy client. I've got no affiliation to them other than that. Now, cost for this complete system was 11 and a half thousand bucks with any rebates. Now, the house itself is a long two-storey design. Four bedrooms, three bathrooms, media room, double garage, and typical of a medium uh, family home nowadays. Now, what loads are we pulling in? Uh, this is the biggest one, and this is the one that affects bills most. Uh, we've got three phase to the board. This is a three phase ducted air conditioning system. Um, it, 16 kilowatts, 17 kilowatts on heating. All of our lighting is LED down lights. We have a front load nine kilo washing machine. Try to use this only during daylight hours when solar's working. And this thing sitting here, the dryer, try not to use it at all. However, when the weather's not good outside to dry clothes, we do have to use this. The dishwasher that's working now, we try to use this only once a day in the morning. So we're producing solar while we're using it. Apart from that, we're a house of three adults. Two are working from home, I'd say 80% of the time during the past year. Um, and one does a lot of gaming, not me. And over the last month, we've installed this spa. Uh, the water in it's kept at 34, 35 degrees Celsius. It doesn't turn on between 10 at night and about five in the morning. We also have gas to the premises. The only stuff that's using gas is this instantaneous hot water service. The only other thing in the house that's powered by gas are our gas hot plates. The supply for both our electricity and gas, because we have them packaged up, is AGL in Sydney. The first four bills in the year were under a new home plan, uh, where whilst you're building, you can supply uh, power to trades and the like for tools and battery recharging. Um, our costs for that were a supply charge of 69.5 cents a day. Um, general usage of power is charged at 21.07 cents per kilowatt hour. And our feeding tariff for our solar is 9.5 cents per kilowatt hour. After those four months, AGL got in contact with me and said, oh, you're, you're obviously living there now. Um, we'll have to change your plan. And we suggest we put you on, um, it was another plan, I can't remember what it was at the time. But I've put in our, all the figures for just one account into a spreadsheet. Um, so you need to put in your supply charge, your general usage charge, and your food in tariff, and the amount that you're using, and how many days the supply was for. And it was really interesting, because what they wanted to put us on would have been so expensive. So using that graph, I just went around to different companies and put in their figures for supply, for general usage and food in tariff, because some, some of them leverage the marketing of, we're gonna give you X amount of food in tariff, which is far and above what everyone else gives you, but their supply charge or their general usage charge is quite high, um, or their, their high rate for the food in tariff is only for X amount of kilowatt hours. So in the end, we're with AGL on their solar savers plan. A supply charge of 9.43 cents per day, uh, 
we've got a general usage price of 22.8 cents per kilowatt hour and our food in tariff is 12 cents per kilowatt hour. And with food in tariffs, you do have to look at the complete picture because as I said, a lot of people will spruik a, a, a larger food in tariff to get you in, but in the end it'll cost you more. However, food in tariffs, when you can leverage them, are quite worthwhile because I was at a function and I had some grumpy old bugger telling me that they weren't worth the paper they were written on. However, for us, our last bill in November 22, our credit for food in tariffs was $131.48. That's quite substantial. So something to think about. So let's have a look at what it's actually cost us to drive this house for 12 months. Um, with the solar on the roof, uh, with all of those loads that we have uh, for electricity and gas and our total bill for energy for 12 months. Now, before we go into the actual figures, some general observations. The app on the Enphase system is absolutely superb. And at dinner party conversations about solar, because they do come up once you've got one of these things, my app is better than everyone else's. I'll be quite open with that um, because everyone will get their app out. What, am I, what have I made today? Um, and my app looks a really nice app and gives you really good data. So. Um, I'm very happy with that. But some general observations, blue sky days are really good. Cloud cover isn't good for solar. Um, when you have a nice blue sky day, you'll see a really lovely graph from morning till night. Uh, you get cloud cover, it'll become jagged. Overcast conditions are atrocious. Now, the maximum amount of solar generated by this 9.75 kilowatt system in a day is around the 68 kilowatts. Um, if we get days like we've had this month, we're seeing 60 and over a lot. Um, I know some friends that have got six kilowatt systems um, that are string systems are saying they're, they're pushing it to get over 40. 40 is a really good day for them. A really bad day for us is somewhere between nine and 12 kilowatt hours, but that will be a very gray, overcast, rainy day. So it alters a lot um, over the period of a year, but, all up, it's been awesome. Um, shoulder seasons are really good for us, uh, where we're not using heating or air conditioning. Summer doesn't seem too bad. Winter is, the, we've had three months in winter where we've had large-ish bills on this, um, or large-ish for us, where um, you really notice it. We use the air conditioner as we feel fit. We really don't um, think, oh, we shouldn't be using this. And there's times where it goes 24-7 um, in summer and winter when it's absolutely freezing or really hot. So th we, we just tend to use it, the air um, just to make ourselves comfortable. So let's go over these month by month. Our bill for November last year was $6.04. Our bill for December last year was $3.52 in credit. Uh, our bill for January last year was $44.94 after applying that credit to it. Our bill for February was $39.05. March was $51.28. April was $1.09. Something to, um, that's interesting with this is if it's a bill of less than $10, we can't make a payment because the online payment gateway will only accept a, uh, a payment of $10 or more. So when you're getting these small bills, um, you may not pay anything for a few months. Um, May, May was $10.60. June was $83.93. You can start to see them climbing up. July was $152.98. August was 129.89. You can start to see them coming down now. September was 58.86. October was 17.27. And November, our most recent bill was 19.55 in credit. So you can see the the slope from summer through winter. Our total cost though for the whole year for electricity was $572.86. And for me, before moving into this house, um, in previous houses that I've owned and the rental that we were living in for a couple of years while we were building this, 
I've never seen a bill that less than $550 for a quarter. So to get a complete year's account of $572 for electricity, I think is absolutely awesome. And the last house I owned was 42 squares, um, fairly open plan, and in the mid, and that was over 10 years ago. And in summer, I had a bill of $1,800 back then. So to be able to have a 31, 32 square home where our complete electricity bill is $572 in today's money, I'm wrapped. Uh, this solar is worth every cent. And I have a lot of guys say to me, oh, what's your return on investment? I don't care. I'm more looking at my cash flow each month. And for 11 and a half grand for solar, I would go and my electric mountain bike cost me 10 grand. Um, and I thought nothing of that. This saves me money all the time. So I'm, I'm really, really happy. Now, the add-on to that though, in our total energy consumption is our gas bill. And the gas bill is, it's not cheap, considering we have on-demand gas hot water and we've got a cooktop which doesn't get a lot of use. We do a lot of cooking outside on a, a gas LPG barbecue or propane. Um, I'll just go for our gas bill too. Uh, this comes in every quarter. Our first bill was $60.84. In February, we got a $112.97 bill. In June, I got a $129.83 bill. In September, September was interesting. The bill came in at $300 and I thought, that is, that's out of the stratosphere. So I went around and did a meter reading, logged into the website for AGL and did a manual reading. They'd overcharged me by 100%. Um, the actual bill was 150.85. And once I put the meter reading in and contacted them, they they reduced the bill, but that was because they hadn't had a meter reader around and they just guessed what the bill would be. And it wasn't guessed on our usage because our usage has never been $300. So that was really interesting. So September's bill was $150.85. November, October to November was $144.89. Our total bill for gas, for hot water and our cooktop is $599.38. Both the, so it was more than our electricity bill for the 12 months. Um, put our electricity and our gas together, $1,172.24. So in wrap up, to run a four bedroom, two storey, 31 square home for 12 months for less than 1200 bucks, gotta be happy with that. And most of that is because of the 11 and a half grand's worth of solar I put on the roof. Um, so if you're on the fence about this, get it, it's worth every cent, get a quality system, get some quality guys in like I did uh, to install it. As I said, Penrith Solar Centre, if you're in the Sydney region, give those guys a call because they were just so awesome to deal with. Um, you know, from everything from the initial consultation to the install. Um, I've never had to contact them ever since because it's just worked as they say, and it has worked so very well. So that's it for today. There's some real world figures for some a real world family. Uh, I hope that helps you if you're going through this process. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later. Bye now.